big on the cucumber and this variety is called a mini muncher I've grown a cucumber called mini munch in the past and uh, this was in the same catalogue mini munch and mini muncher so I thought I'd give these a try it looks very similar 10 centimeter fruits two per node I don't know what the difference is but I thought I'd give them a go anyway I should be starting these off in a quarter seed tray reading the instructions on the seed packet it says that the seeds need a covering of around two and a half centimetres an inch of soil so I've just put a little layer there of uh, seed and cutting compost just open the packet and wow <laughs> you certainly don't get a lot for your money there's exactly six seeds in here so quite easily to space them out evenly which will make them easier for separating when we come to potting on them hopefully that's if they germinate so with those in there now I'll just get some uh, sift compost on the top just likely tamp that there I'll give these a soak in from the bottom just to dampen the compost and like um, chilies, peppers, cucumbers also like high humidity to germinate in and so what I'll be adding onto the tray when they go inside the heated propagator I'll be putting this on the top as well so that'll add a bit more humidity and hopefully they'll germinate a little bit quicker this morning we're going to be sowing some brassicas the first one up is going to be Brussels sprout, although the technique is very, very similar for all the other brassicas in the family, the cabbage, the cauliflower, etc. This variety is called Crispus, and it's allegedly a club root resistant variety. So I'm in an 84 cell tray, and I've allowed three rows, and that's seven in each, 21, although I don't think there's that many seeds in there. Uh, the sowing medium is a uh, seed and cutting compost, in this case it's clover. I made a depression about 10 millimetres deep in each section and just put one seed in each then I'll cover them either with the soil or maybe use a bit of vermiculite. That's the sprouts all sown now. It said on the packet average contents 15 but in the end I got 18 out I think. Uh, covered them in vermiculite. Notice on the seeds it's got like a pink coating which I think is an anti-fungal thing. So hopefully that should aid in better germination. Right I've got the rest of these cells to fill now with other brassicas and I'll get back to you when hopefully all those are full. I'm going to be sowing some sunflowers and this particular variety is called Titan. The other variety I tend to grow is called Russian Joint. I'll be growing them in these uh, seven centimetre pots and it's just normal seed and cutting compost. Uh, normally sunflowers don't like being messed about once they've germinated they go all sulky and start to wilt and that so hopefully there'll only be one more potting on from these maybe into a five inch pot and before they actually go out into the bed. The seeds are easy enough to handle so there's no need for any sowing devices. Uh, only growing eight this year as I said because uh, growing the potatoes in buckets I won't have, only have one full bed to sow the potatoes in and the sunflowers go in the rows between the potatoes and they tend to do well. I've put these into soak and once I've taken up the water they need I put them in a seed tray and just pop a little propagator lid over the top and I think I'll put them in the greenhouse on the allotment. Before we continue, I'll just uh, excuse the background here. I've had to put a piece of newspaper up on the greenhouse door because we've got the blue tits in and out of the nest box at the moment. And with me being in the greenhouse more often, they're inquisitive and keep having a look. So I don't want to frighten them off. So by putting the sheet of paper up there, it puts the mind at rest. Anyway, um, I'm now about to start 
sowing the tomatoes. For those of you who watch the channel regular, you'll know my favourite of all is the Crimson Crush. Never fails to produce a great crop outside and it's also very blight resistant and uh, we've hit a few sessions of blight on the plots over the last couple of years and the Crimson Crush has come through really strong. But the last year or so I've noticed there's a couple of other new kids on the block and that's uh, a couple of varieties, one called Mountain Magic and the other one's called Furline. So what I want to do this year is a little bit of a trial. In the bed I'm going to have uh, 12 tomatoes and I'm going to have four of each variety, four Crimson Crush, four Mountain Magic and four uh, Furline and we'll see how they perform. So I'll germinate them exactly the same, pot them on the same and plant them out the same and at the end of the year we'll see how they compare against each other. And here are the three varieties. It does say on each packet that they are blight resistant and resistant is the key word, they're not blight free, it's just that it means they'll stand up to an attack of blight better than conventional strains of tomato. So I'll go to the first one here, this is the uh, so the favourite Crimson Crush and this is from Sutton Seeds. Moving on to the next one is the Thompson Morgan and it's one called Furline. And last but not least on the end there it's from King Seeds and that variety is called Mountain Magic. For germination this year I'll try something a little bit different. Normally I just do them in normal compost and then go on with it but I've seen a few really successful germinations this year by a couple of other YouTubers using this damp towel method. So uh, I'll be sowing them onto the damp towel then putting them into the heated propagator. This tub here is a bit bigger than the other one so what I've done I've put a little dividing paper there and I'll sow two varieties in there and the one in there. They'll be labelled up on the front so there's no risk of them getting mixed up. Considering these F1 varieties of tomatoes are somewhat of a specialist cross just to get the blight resistance, you don't naturally expect a lot for your money. But all the manufacturers do actually quote an average seed content for the packet. And uh, have a look what we actually got. The Thompson and Morgan, which were the furline variety we were using, quoted an average of 12 and we got 14 in our packet. The Sutton's, which is the Crimson Crush, quite an average of 10 seeds and we actually got 12. Last but not least it's King Seeds which are the Mountain Magic variety. They quote an average content of 6 and we got 11 in there so good value. So here's the tubs labelled up there Crimson Crush Mountain Magic Fairline. Have a quick look in the tubs. The seeds are spaced out fairly evenly and there's the, that's the Crimson Crush there. So what I'm going to do now is pop these into the heated propagator in the greenhouse as is and we'll keep an eye on germination. You join me on a lovely spring morning and it is spring, it's the days of spring equinox so we're officially into spring now. And a uh, fantastic day by the look of it, although the last week or so I've been out of action, I've had a sciatica again, so I think it was a week, week today it kicked in and uh, anybody what suffers with sciatica will know the pain it involves and uh, luckily it's on its way out now, I've got a, a support belt on so I won't be doing anything strenuous today but uh, I had a quick walk around, yesterday was the first day out for almost a week and one thing I did notice inside the, the coal frame here there was a lot of condensation building up with the vents being shut. So I'd previously ordered some small little soffit vents what fit underneath the eaves of the roof and yesterday with the help of a friend I bored some holes out and I've fitted two in the front, two in the back and one each side so regardless of whether the vents are shut we'll still get some airflow into the coal frame. Snowdrops have more or less finished flowering now. For those of you with uh, snowdrops in containers, now's an ideal time to uh, split them up if you want to and plant them out into borders. 
This originally started off as a small clump that I had from Nick, from Nick's allotment. They've been in here, I think it's the second year, and they've multiplied probably three or four times. So uh, I'm going to be putting these out in the borders today. That's a nice little job. So there's not many. You can see the roots down the bottom here, but all you need to do is to just literally grab a handful, tear them away. And then we're ready to plant and we repeat it for the rest of the garden. Well, the clump was much bigger than I'd imagined. I probably put three quarters of it, split it up into probably six bunches, put them in the border in the garden. The remainder, I've actually split these again, put them back in the bucket, added a bit of fish blood and bone, and I'll use these as a nursery plants to multiply and hopefully add some more next year or the year after. These three beds here are marked out for the brassicas to grow in. Um, I've done a pH check this morning and all of them are round about the seven mark. So I'll be adding a dressing of, this is lime, top dressing of lime and just let the rain wash it in. And hopefully that will help again fend off any sign of club root. three beds all lined there. I'll leave that on there. You might have a bit of rain. If not, I'll tickle it in with one of these three prong cultivators. Just emphasise if you are putting lime on the beds, make sure you've got some protective gloves on because it can be nasty stuff. And if your skin sensitive, it might even burn. With this spell of warm weather we're having, I thought it's ideal time to make full use of the cold frame. Um, I've got some polycarp sheet here. What I'm going to do is put it as a false floor, raise it up on a few house bricks there because at night it's still cold and it'll help insulate the bottom stop and the cold coming up. So I'll probably get some of the seed onions in here and I might even put the, the brassicas in as well. Looking back on the clips I realised I hadn't shown you an update of the full tray that I'd sown with the brassicas. So here goes, we've got uh, cabbage there, the greyhound type. Next one, a couple of rows of Clapton cauliflower, followed by another couple of rows of Killerton cabbage. We've got three rows here, and my favourite probably altogether, that's the Calabrese, the Iron Man. And right on the very end there is the Brussels sprouts, the variety called Crispus. So that was a while ago, and now on a quick look there, you can see the germination has been fairly good. I've got a bit of RTT on the end of these ones there, we've got multiple seeds in, but that's not to worry. Well, do they? I'll give these a light misting with a sprayer first, and then I'm going to move these outside. A good tip with brassicas is one I found out to my detriment is once they're up, don't subject them to too much heat because they don't like it. So I'm going to actually put these out into the cold frame as well. So just give them the water and they'll be going out. Being out of action for almost a week, some jobs got put back, and one of them was the planting of the onion sets. I've been planting three types of onion sets this year as usual. These are the heat treated variety, the particular ones are from Marshalls. This one is called a rumba. And as usual rule with any onion sets, do a full inspection first. Any signs of mould or the sets a bit squidgy, discard them straight away. This is just a normal seed and cutting compost. Lovely top. to do then is put a depression down to your first finger joint I do. One final thing before I actually start planting is that I check my onion sets like this then if it's got any any old tissue on the top there what I do is just go across the top with a pair of scissors nice square top then any new growth there is straight out the top it's not got to fight against the old tissue of the onion so uh, and also any loose skin Peel that off there, and that there is ready to go. So 
that's the first try done of Rumba 24. Well, I'll do, I'll do one try of the other two varieties first. That's the Fen Early and Red Fen. And then I'll decide if I'm going to do extra tries of the others. All I'll do now is put it in for some bottom soaking and then put it in the greenhouse just to start to germinate. I've just fetched these out of the soaking tray and something I've got, forgot to mention for anybody what's growing sets for the first time is that uh, once they're in there don't be impatient yet you expecting to see green growth out the top straight away you probably won't see nothing for two to three weeks at least hopefully the important thing the business is being done below the soil and these will be putting out roots and you might on occasion see the onion set actually rise to the top so just push it down gently, put a bit of soil around it and very shortly after that then you'll see the green going and that's it. For those of you that watch my channel on a regular basis you'll know how I promote the heat treated onion sets, particularly those that are purchased from SE Marshalls. However, all's not gone to plan this year. I've planted the uh, rumba, they've gone okay and also the red fen they've gone okay but it was when I come to look at the the fen early sets I looked at the onion sets and there was in abysmal condition now I bought two sets of these heat treated onions they come in packs of three you can buy it as a budget thing and on both sets of the fen early the onions below par the, the skins all wrinkled and I've checked both bags and the same so I contacted Marshalls to let them know of the situation and um, to be fair they did offer to replace them but bear in mind now we're the 21st of March and this is Thursday and they can't get the stuff out till very early next week. Time's getting pushing on so as a goodwill gesture first of all they said they'd replace the onion sets and I said well for the inconvenience now is there any chance you could throw me a jar it's a little plastic jar of onion fertilizer i think it retails for about six or seven pounds and there's no way they'd do it so what i'm doing i said to him forget sending the onion sets out now i'll plant where i can i said just refund the money for the two sets of onion and in return i'll give you some free advertising on my youtube channel so these are the onion sets i've got from marshall's so the other two varieties rumba and the red fen was fine, but it was these fen early. I'll just show the quality of the onion sets I'm sending out. This is as is from out of the bag, straight into the tray. As you can see, the skins have gone withered. They're not hard. So there's not one or two, there's quite a lot from there. And this is the other bag here, not opened yet. And that's the quality they've sent out. So I'm not very happy with them. I do promote them every year, but quality is quality at the end of the day. I'm having my hard earned cash. Okay. Well, as you can gather from that, I was not too impressed with the service, the customer service from Marshall Seeds. Regardless of what industry you're in, you're always going to get blips in quality. And that, that's the course of nature. But it's how the quality is addressed is the thing for me. And the nature I was responded to by the agent from Marshalls was totally unacceptable. There's too many of these companies now willing to take your money with a smile and as soon as you go back to an issue with them, the down and now, they've had your money, that's it. Simply not good enough. But if you've got issues with the company, go and approach them direct. Do it in a dignified manner, don't go guns blazing. But then hopefully they'll respond in the correct manner and address the problem. So if they don't, this company needs highlighting and addressing for all the rest of the customers to see because at the end of the day no customers no business fortunately for me i've still been looking for heat treated onion sets and now there's other seed companies out there there's quite a few of them actually follow me on instagram and also have some on youtube watch as well so uh, i'll see what they have to offer um coming up next i'll be uh oh, planting my seed potatoes i'll probably be doing that tomorrow now it's starting to get a bit late so that's it, end for this one. Until next week, see you later. Bye for now.